Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Tequila Talks, your friend Tequila Bay. Today, we're going to be drinking some Tequila Corazon. On our previous episode, I was drinking Corazon uh, single barrel with China, our guest. And now we want to just take the opportunity to dive a little bit deeper into what makes Corazon a unique tequila. So after a long evening of filming, learning, working, bringing on guests, we're on our last rung. I think this is going to be a much more laid back video with you guys. And again, just diving into what makes Tequila Corazon special. For tequila aficionados, you know, it doesn't really get as complex as it needs to be. You have the process of tequila making. You have your harvesting, you have your uh, cooking, your milling, your fermentation, your distillation. But it depends on each distillery, it depends on each process, and it depends on each brand to bring out the best of the agave. I think what Tequila Corazon is doing with their single barrel and their expressions line of tequila, which they're bringing in that bourbon world into the tequila world and combining it together, I think that's something very unique that Tequila Corazon is doing. So again, we're not reinventing the wheel. It's a not confirmed additive free tequila. And like last episode, China really liked some of the flavor profiles, but she did notice a little bit more astringency. It was a little bit more masculine. And I think that's the bourbon influence from the Blanton's barrel. But let's go ahead and dive right into this tasting. We have the Tequila Corazon Single Barrel Expression Añejo. This is a 20 month aged Añejo in a Blanton's barrel. A friend of mine from El Patron called me up. He's like, hey, I have access to get a bottle of this. He brought it in from San Diego. Currently in our market, the Corazon Añejo Reposado en Blanco are the only ones available, but I'm diligently trying to get my hands on all the different expressions of Corazon, single barrel and expressions. When we talk about their expressions line, what I was reading into and what I've seen at specific bars around the country, they're aging in, in George Stagg, they're aging in Weller barrels, they're aging in some of the finest bourbon barrels that you could possibly thinking, uh, think of. And again, as we think about as tequila grows in popularity and the goal of all these distilleries to create these niche products and to bridge these gaps between bourbon drinkers, scotch drinkers, wine drinkers, I think at the focal point is tequila drinkers. So we're the most important and I think all these different components, all of these different nuances that we're adding into the market of tequila are value adds to be able to have more tequila drinking friends and more agave brothers and sisters and fans and aficionados of tequila. Last night I was uh, paid a visit by my friend Janelle from Tequila Comos and she was asking me about my thoughts on additives, abocantes. We had a nice conversation at my bar. And again, Corazon is not confirmed additive free, but we can't get over obsessed with this conversation of additives. There's instances where these nuances and these additives are adding a certain component, a certain value add, and again, bridging these gaps from non-tequila drinkers to tequila drinkers. So now we have a whole brand of tequila that's specifically focusing on these expressions of bourbon world, tequila world, and adding a whole new demographic of friends. So let's go ahead and do the nosing. Yesterday I noticed a lot of mango, tropical fruit, some citrus notes. But today when I drank it earlier, I noticed a much more oak forward expression. So I really want to open this up. I really want to air it out, let it develop and see what tasting profile that we notice here. And maybe after a couple of tequilas that I've had already, it might be a little bit blurry. So we want to, yeah, we want to let this breathe a little bit. So Corazon for me, the heart, Corazon. When you think about the, the agave, you're fermenting, you're cooking the Corazon, the heart, the piña. And this is where the most ripe sugars are found. So when we think about the brand Corazon Tequila, these bottles are elegant. The logo is beautiful. It kind of resembles the El Patron logo right here. 
I've always been a fan of the branding of Tequila Corazon. I think the name, especially in Spanish, just rolls right off the tongue really well. So if you're not overly obsessed with additive free or not additive free, this is definitely a brand that you should try. Made at Casa San Matias, 1103. Tequila Matchmaker ranks it in the top 43 distilleries. And uh, San Matias puts out some good products. Tequila San Matias, Tequila Rey Sol. So Tequila Corazon, I think, is their, their most prominent, most known, and most um, exquisite expression of tequila. So again, Tequila Corazon. The logo is beautiful, a heart at the center of that agave. These quemadores that are shaving the, the agaves and getting these beautiful piñas for a perfect expression of tequila. Okay, I think we've let it breathe enough. Again, today I'm picking up all of that oak, some vanilla. That tropical fruit really isn't coming through and I'm just wondering what that was. Maybe the glass wasn't polished properly. Uh, I had my bartender pour it out for me, so I don't know if she did her due diligence because I'm overly obsessed with polishing these glasses until they're perfectly and pristine. Um, because again, I noticed, it, maybe it was, it was kind of even like a passion fruit, a very tropical, kind of tart, but now I'm not picking anything of that up. So there was probably some, some cross-contamination. There was probably an additive in that pour. Because I am getting none of that. I'm actually tasting all of the bourbon, the oaks, the spices, the bourbon forward, bourbon-esque. Blanton's, which is one of the most renowned and sought after bourbons. This was aged in that Blanton's barrel. Now, when we think about bourbon, it can only be used once for bourbon. That's the appellation. Those are the regulations of how bourbon should be made. So that's why bourbon barrels are so uh, sought after in the tequila making world because they're just so prevalent. Bourbon makers use them once and ship them off to Mexico. And now Tequila Corazon is taking advantage of that, making all these beautiful and wonder expression, wonderful expressions of barrel aged, bourbon aged tequila that are bourbon forward, oak forward and complex. Now, before I get a little too tipsy, I think I'm gonna just lay off of this glass. No, one more, one more sip, hold on. I'm really like, as I drink a little bit more, it becomes a little bit more subtle, smooth. <sighs> a little bit more of that fruity now is kind of coming through. Maybe at this point it's placebo, but let's go ahead and wrap up this night. I've had a lot of tequila. I want to be able to just now relax. I don't want to have a hangover. I want to be able to work tomorrow well. Thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Tequila Talks. Please go ahead and leave me your comments. Subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and give me your own suggestions about what tequilas you want to try next or you want me to try next with you. Leave me your comments, your ideas. If I said something wrong, if you agree with me, please follow the channel. Follow me on Instagram, on TikTok, Tequila Bay Official. And on the next episode of Tequila Talks, we're shifting gears to cocktail series. Um, fall is right around the corner, so we will be creating some fall-inspired cocktails for you to enjoy on this chillier, more fall forward. If you're here in the Midwest, the leaves are going to start changing colors. and We're definitely going to enjoy some good fall cocktails. So check us out on our next episode of Cocktail Series, and I'll see you next time. Salucita, one more. I'm going to sneak it in. Salud. I'll see you later. Thank you.